I just watched this video, which was posted in February earlier on this year. And it is a compilation of knockdowns and moments that Alexander Yusek got stunned, both amateur, pro, and in the WSB. And one thing you'll notice from watching this video is that Yusek has been hurt and dropped to the body several times. This particular uh, part of the video here shows him in there in an amateur fight against Artur Baturbiev. And I was well aware that he'd fought Baturbiev. I'd heard about him getting dropped in the Baturbiev fight, but it was good to actually see it here uh, for myself. And indeed, he gets dropped with a body shot. And there's a previous amateur fight where he also gets dropped with a body shot and he gets hurt with a body shot in uh, another fight. So is it the case that Alexander Yusek is vulnerable to the body? in a Keith Thurman kind of way. You know, Keith Thurman was a guy who took headshots relatively well. I'm not saying Keith Thurman has an iron jaw, but he took headshots relatively well. But when it comes to the body, Thurman was always very, very vulnerable. He's constantly getting hurt with body shots. And it might be Alexander Yusek's Achilles heel as well. He might also be vulnerable in a similar way to the body. And therefore, all these guys targeting the head, all these guys trying to, hit what their eyes can't see in terms of Yusek because he's got great head movement. Perhaps they're missing a trick here and they should be targeting Alexander Yusek's body. Now, in the first fight with Anthony Joshua, you did notice that AJ had some success. I want to say in the, was it eighth, ninth round, where he started switching to the body and really digging those hooks and uh, kind of uppercuts to Alexander Yusek's solar plexus but he didn't really keep it up. And I guess it left him vulnerable because shortly after that, didn't he get the swollen eye when he started targeting Yusek's body? So you have to be careful, of course, especially when you're a taller guy trying to go to a shorter guy's body because you leave your head exposed. So you have to do it in the right way. Perhaps AJ should be trying to throw straight shots to the body, you know, and finding, I say safe ways, safer ways to try and do that, to try and set up straight shots to the body and see if he can have success there. Because at the end of the day, he is the physically bigger man, and he needs to try and impose his size and his power on Yusek. And perhaps the most effective way to do it, rather than target in the head, would be to target that body. Not to try and slow him down necessarily, although that's uh, a, an effect that will occur probably as well, but actually to try and knock him out with a body shot. That might be Anthony Joshua's a strategy going into this rematch. If he's looked at videos like this, perhaps he learned something from the first fight. Uh, perhaps he knows that Usek has been stopped to the body before. He certainly didn't appear to have that in his mind, at least not for the majority of the first fight. He was headhunting. There was very little body work from Anthony Joshua until, like I say, the later rounds, eight, nine, something like that. Then all of a sudden he switched it to the body. But for this rematch, maybe he can make it a thing. Maybe he can make it one of his main goals to target Yusek's body and try and take him out with body shots. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think that Yusek is vulnerable to body punches, like more so than many other fighters, in the same way that Keith Thurman is? Or do you think that Yusek has done extra strength work on his midsection and he's taken care of that particular vulnerability now? Again, some of these clips that it shows in this video were just a few years ago when Usyk was a pro. They're not just clips from his amateur days. And if you are vulnerable to the body, perhaps there's not that much you can do about it. I mean, surely he w was strong in the midsection in terms of his abs and what have you. Even in the amateurs, he looks in great condition here. But yeah, he still get and obviously, right? I know that anybody can get hurt with a body shot. If you get hit in the right spot, in the floating rib, you, you know, the wind is going to leave your sails. Okay, that's what's going to happen. But some people, just like with headshots, some people are more vulnerable to the body than other people. And I don't think it's a matter of because they haven't trained as hard or haven't done as many sit-ups. I just think it's a natural thing. You know, it's like punch resistance to the head. Some people just naturally take a better punch than other people and there's nothing you can really do about it. Same for the body. I think some people just take a better shot to the body and it doesn't matter how many sit-ups or whatever you do, these people won't be able to take as good a body shot as other people. It is what it is. 
what can Keith Furman really do to take a better body shot than, I don't know, Sean Porter or something? Probably nothing. So leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be very interested to hear what you guys have to say about this. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct, but that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app, with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, is decentralized, and is 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract, there's no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.